Oh, it's you. You're here. You came. Lock him, Miss Student. Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. I can't believe you came back. I'm so touched. We are so sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Natsume. Oh no, think nothing of it. Relax. If if I were a cat, I would purr with pleasure at the company of such fine compatriots. Noble, nurture, never failing, me ponies. Oh, now let's not get carried away. Oh, I quite agree. There's nothing more reassuring than the familiarity of one's native land. On the other hand, it is through friendship transcending... Uh, yeah, through friendship transcending international borders that one truly appreciates the fact. Such is my belief, at least. Oh, it's... yes. It's... it's you. The miserable rotten spy, Herlock Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing here? I have no intention of doing anything, per se. Save observing, of course. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Well, having encountered some curious reading material in that gloomful room, and having unmasked the secret identity of that eccentric pair, I decided I should drop... It, it, I should drop in my own. Uh, I should drop in on my way home to see how our divested, divested friend is faring. Gloomful room. At least your accommodation here offers a window, my dear fellow. In that sense, it is the superior option. Anyway, I must commend you on your taste in books. My day has been del a, a delight and cost me not a penny. Why, you... how dare you, Herlock Sholmes? Oh. I've had it. I'm through. I'm at the end of my rope. I should never have come to Great Britain. It was a terrible mistake. Haunted by spirits in those accursed lodgings, no doubt my luck will be cursed in tomorrow's trial as well. My whole life is... bedamned. What are you thinking? He mentioned that once before, didn't he? That his lodgings were cursed, I mean. And there is much truth in Mr. Mustache's words. What? Cursed is a wholly appropriate description, I would say, for the man's lodgings, and indeed for tomorrow's trial. What's that supposed to mean? Mr. Natsume, what did you mean by what you said just now? About the trial tomorrow being cursed? Oh no, why why are you looking so grave? You're, you're, you're making me nervous. I was just getting carried away, that's all. I, I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I see. That's really <laughs> agitated him. You, you don't mean the trial really is cursed somehow? Are you referring to the prosecutor? The Reaper of the Bailey? The Reaper? Oh no, what do you mean? Please tell me. Summarize in succinctly in 16 salient words. No defendant has ever survived a trial in which the Reaper stands for the prosecution. Ever. Oh my goodness, can it really be true? That was 16 words exactly. Yesterday, Mr. Naruhodo successfully defended someone against the Reaper, but then, after the trial was over, the defendant passed away in, an unu in unusual circumstances. Mr. McGilded. What? Ah, I am impressed, Miss Susanto. You have an eye for detail. Actually, the Lord Chief Justice told us. Mr. Sholmes. Surely it can't be that having failed to have the accused convicted, Lord Van Zykes killed the man himself? Oh no, he couldn't have, surely. You have some wonderful notions. Sorry? The man isn't a mass murderer, he's a court prosecutor, my dear fellow. Oh, yes. Why, of course he is. Of course he is? Then why are you trying to scare me? It could be said, however, that the real truth about the man is even more terrifying than your hypothesis. What on earth do you mean by that? Hmm. 
Van Zykes is a quite exceptional exceptional man. However, in London courts of law, exceptional does not equate to winning every case without exception. That's that's good. That's good. <laughs> so sick, you look like you're gonna cry tears of joy. As you are no doubt aware, in British criminal trial, there is both a judge and a jury. The judge officiates based on the letter of the law, whilst the jury offers public opinion and common sense. It is an excellent system, whereby the defendant's guilt is considered from several points of view. However, public opinion in particular is somewhat easily manipulated. Right. Criminals, and corrupt lawyers for that matter, can use it to their advantage by any means at their disposal. Contriving evidence, calling imposters as witnesses, and so on. By such underhand means, those who would want to... Well, those who would want to are able to sway the jury. Which means that even in the light of irrefutable evidence, the prosecution can fail. But it means the wrong verdict can be passed. And sadly, it is from time to time, my dear madam. It is simply the reality of the situation. And that's alright. However, those indicted by Lord Van Zykes cannot escape justice. Their fate is sealed. Oh my. Though the ad adjudication... Yeah, adjudication may see them leave the courtroom with their freedom. Within months, they all disappear. It is most striking. Disappear? But how? Oh, by all manner of misfortune, sir. Perhaps they are trampled under a passing carriage. Perhaps they fall into the Thames and drown. Perhaps they are suddenly overcome by a raging fever. Or perhaps attacked by a highway by highwaymen. Oh no. All examples of the reality of events here in London, I'm afraid. I knew it. I'm a dead dodo done for doom. When you said accursed lodgings before, you were referring to your room at Mr. Garadeb's house, I assume? Do you mean to say you believe the place is cursed? It's been a year now since I came to Great Britain, but I'd only been in London a week before I started to notice this to no notice strange feelings in myself. That didn't take long, then. Everywhere I looked, there were foreign faces staring at me, laughing behind my back. I uh, was sure people were talking about me. I started to become nervous about going outside. They were always staring at me, all the time, from dawn till dusk. So I shut myself away in my room. But even that didn't help. The fear wouldn't go away. You must have been very lonely, having been away from your homeland for such a long time. I've had to move a number of times, most recently, to that room on Briar Road a week ago now. Yes, why did you choose there? It seems a little inconvenient. The rent is cheap. I have so little money, it appealed to me straight away. Of course, I asked why it was so affordable. The landlord just simpered and said, The room is cursed. Oops. He quickly tried to cover his mistake, but it was too late, so I told him. If you have something to say, then say it, but if not, don't mention it in the first place. Yes, well said. But it was true. It was all true. You mean, the room really is cursed? Ever since I moved into that windowless hellhole, my sleep has been plagued with nightmares. I awake feeling as though I'm being choked to death. And in my waking hours, people are stabbed in front of me as I walk down the street. I'm branded a killer, thrown in prison. Nobody wants to know me. I'm... I'm surrounded by scary, sinister spirits. If only there was someone, just one person on my side. Can no one find it in his or her heart to believe in me? Really, no one at all. To believe. Yes, to believe. Um, Mr. Sholmes? Oh, me? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about the case on the SS Buria, if you recall. The Buria. The Buria. Ah, oh, that case. The one with the snake. Well, yes. 
At that time, I was the suspect, but you believed in me and listened to my side of the story, and you helped us to investigate. I did, did I? Interesting. What I want to know is why? Why did you believe me? I see. Yes, you mean... Because you were a grimly... A gri is it grimly? Grimly? <laughs> Grim, grimly, grimly, whatever. Dressed, the East, shady Eastern fellow found with the victim in a locked room. Um, well, if you like, yes. I'm a little surprised that the answer requires explanation, my dear fellow. It's quite simple, really. You said I didn't do it. What? I could have been lying. Surely you must have had your doubts. You must have suspected me a little. I think perhaps you have misunderstood. I neither recall believing in you, nor in that which you were, in that uh, you were telling me. What? You see, the only things I believe in are those I choose to believe in. What? What do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? I make up my own mind about what is to be believed and what is not. If I should like to believe in something, I do. The circumstances can hang as far as I'm concerned. But I could have betrayed your trust. In that case, I should have made an elementary error of judgment. Nothing more. Betrayal of trust is an over overused excuse in my opinion. Meaning... Whether or not one should trust another is, in the final analysis, down to oneself. It is a matter of whether or not one can trust oneself. Yes, yes, he's right. He's right. Lockup student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Whether or not I can believe myself. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. You were so right, Kazuma. Well, my dear fellows, it is time we were leaving, I believe. Already? Visiting hours are over. The guard will be here shortly to escort us out. There is a restaurant near here that serves excellent trout. Would you care to join me? Oh dear, there's never enough time, is there? Uh, Mr. Natsume, if you'd like, in the trial tomorrow, I'd be happy to represent you. Welcome, student Mr. Narihodo Esquire. As I said, I only experienced the British courtroom for the first time yesterday, and although the man I was representing was found not guilty, I lost sight of something crucial. Something crucial? What to believe in? The defendant? Justice or the truth? How to believe, even? But, I think I finally worked it out. I've decided, I've decided I must believe in myself above all else, to trust my instincts. And my instincts are telling me that you, Mr. Natsume, are innocent of this crime. And it's imperative that we prove that in court. <laughs> Local student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. I will fight for your innocence until the bitter end with every weapon available to me. So I hope you'll permit me to represent you tomorrow. As I said when we first met, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who will listen to me in my native tongue. Of course, Mr. Natsume. It would be fair to say that your mind was, in many ways, made up from the outset. You merely needed the events of today to fully realize it. Yes, I think you're right about that. It's been a roundabout journey, but I got there in the end. Miss Susato? Yes? Would you be willing to stand by my side tomorrow and help me in court? Absolutely. As I said this morning, you may consider me your pers personal judicial assistant. 
The shocking events of yesterday's trial still weigh heavily on my mind, but it's time to stop looking backwards. Kazuma believed in me, and Mr. Sholmes believes in me now, too. So it's time. Time that I learned to believe in myself. Soseki has no one. He's all alone, so it's my job to help him. To fight his corner. Tomorrow, in the courtroom, with all the strength I can muster. Oh my god, we finally made it to this <laughs> fucking trial. I don't even have that much evidence. Well, I never expected this. Who'd have thought we'd be back here again so soon? We are on a study tour of Great Britain with the intention of learning the country's legal practices. In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court experience as possible. Well, yes, I suppose that's true, but for the person in the dock, it may, it may well be his or her one and only time in court, and it could be life-changing. In which case, treating it as research may seem a little crass. Oh, when you put it like that, you're quite right. Good morning! Oh, Mr. Natsume, good morning. Oh dear, are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Yes, I've heard that expression, but I really don't want to catch a worm. So I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't catch a wink. And now I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do all literary people take things so literally? Thank you for putting your faith in us today, Mr. Natsume. I wish I had nine lives. My future... My whole future hangs in the balance. I'm too terrified to tremble. Really? Because I can feel tremors in the floor. I can't do this. I can't take it. Although, locum student Mr. Naruhodo Esquire of Yes. I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. <laughs> it looked like the opening night of the opera. There were so many people. I had no idea my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Oh, um, neither did I. Do you know why that might be, Miss Susato? I'm sorry, but I have no idea. So, that all-knowing look on your face is just a coincidence then, is it? Don't hide the truth from me. It's, it's, it's because of the Reaper, isn't it? It, is that right, Miss Susato? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't miss who was talking, but yeah. Is that right? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning, and yes, Lord Van Zykes is on the front page of every one. I do it. Sometime after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey, he stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now, in fact, until the day before yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gregson told us something similar, didn't he? The trial two days ago marked Lord Van Zyke's return to the courtroom after a, a very long hiatus. The trial of Magnus McGilded. Ugh, what a harrowing experience that was. I believe that appearance made it in the made. Oh, I, I believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. But we wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey so soon for what appears to be a mundane murder? That's the question the papers are asking, and they are all speculating various answers. Mundane? Mundane? It's the most significant saga of this, of, of this century to some of us. Oh dear, I mean no offense, Mr. Natsume, but, the, but that's how the papers are describing it. Well, lest we forget the fact that it could spark an international incident. Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. But there's another blatant similarity with the trial of two days ago. Yes, I agree. Locum student Mr. Naruhodo Esquire, it's you! Me? Well, I suppose that's true. Both times it is you who stands against this legendary prosecutor. It, it could only mean that you're friends with the Reaper. Oh, please, I don't rub shoulders with, with Deathbringers. I'm afraid that there's really only one other explanation. 
I can only be another exa another example of your uncommon bad luck. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, this is just my luck. Why must I be represented by a man with such frail fortune? By the least lucky lawyer alive. Well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsume, who asked me to represent you. Yes, it's true that I'm just a student new to London with little in the way of experience or skills or luck. But I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end and I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. Oh, benevolent non-locum assistant, Miss Mikotova Esquire S. I am in your debt forever. I shall never forget this. Whatever. <laughs> it did it so fast. The court is it. The court session is about to begin. Kindly make your way into the courtroom. All right then, Mr. Natsume, it's time. Let's go. Yes. This is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom. And my second trial against the Reaper. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because this time I won't let my faith waver. I'll believe in my client to the last. Just like you believed in me. I believe I can do this now. I'm ready for this fight. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the counsel for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. The Nipponese are a truly fascinating breed. Sorry, what? Lord Strongheart has told me all about you. That you are a student who arrived in London but two days ago. A mere amateur. Do you have a point? Being a compatriot, you feel compelled to try to help the accused, I suppose. Typical Nipponi's arrogance. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropriate description. After all, at our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. Very true, and a most fascinating, if dark, trial it was, too. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. Here's to the acquitted, and his unfortunate, violent end. Thank you, counsels. I see both, si both sides are in fine fettle. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you ready to carry out your duties here in court as impartial members of the public? You never know when you might be down on your luck, but I believe in fair play for everyone. Well, I must warn you, I'm rather more ruthless than I appear. Oh, well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fellow. I'm afraid to say I think it's quite possible that mustached foreigner did the deed. Come on, what are we waiting for? No doubt he did it anyway. Eh, sorry, didn't quite catch that. Very well, let us proceed. Your opening statement, if you please, Lord Van Zykes. Very recently, Great Britain signed an allegiance with a rising power in the Far East. The accused is... Uh, uh, the accused in the dock today is a student from that same land. A certain Mr. N Soseki Natsume. And while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes. Regrettably, the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of a most sinister act. Of plunging a knife into the back of an innocent woman who was doing nothing but walking down the street. A knife crime? I can tell from bitter experience. Those are the worst. Bloody oath. Bloody oath? They are. Just look at that sallow. Sallow? 
complexion and short stature. He's he's one of those dreadful Japanese. Come on, let's get this over with. With me now. One, two, three. Eh, sorry, didn't quite catch that. Pray, forgive the discourtesy of smashing my hollow chalice here in this great chamber. He couldn't even have waited. <laughs> he couldn't even have waited. It's okay, he got extras. Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. Very well. Bailiff, lead the inspector in, please. Your name and occupation, please. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective in Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard. Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court, Inspector? The victim is thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Green. I beg your pardon, Inspector. Thought to be? Yes, having been stabbed in the back by her attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now, and she's been comatose ever since. What? So they don't even know who she is for sure? Hmm, comatose, I see. But her life is not in danger? Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray, elaborate on the details, Inspector. Sir, if I could ask everyone to look at this street map. As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago at around five in the afternoon. It happened on the pavement during uh, running alongside Briar Road, a wide thoroughfare for horse-drawn vehicles. It had not long. What? Well, it had not long since stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, was walking down the street. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accused and stabbed in the back. Luckily, the young lady's life was spared, and she's currently being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But being unconscious as she is, we've been unable to take a statement from her, of course. This is the case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept the documents as evidence. Okay, she was found with a knife in her back and is currently in hospital. What of the weapon that was used? Sir, I have that here. It was removed from the victim's back. Ouch. That big thing is starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. With a heavy blade like that, almost anyone would have been able to stab the poor woman. Even the... Even the scrag... Scragged? Scragged? <laughs> Looking at Soseki, I suppose. A common or garden jackknife, I would say. Rather nondescript. Thank you, Inspector. The court accepts the blade. Now then, what do we know of the motive? Money or valuables, I presume? Okay, wait, can we look at this knife? Oh, look here. Just at the tip. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right. Well spotted. I wonder what could have happened to it. Yes. You don't think you could still be lodging the victim, do you? Oh dear, I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. Okay, maybe it'll come up. <laughs> it might come up. It might be important later. I think that was all it had. Okay, what about a young woman rendered unconscious following a stab wound? Stout build, early 20s. The east side. Okay. The victim remains unconscious. Her name was gleamed from her personal effects. Other details are unknown. Apart from the single stab wound, no other signs of injury were observed. The assailant was seen running away by the reporting officer and successfully arrested the following day. From what we can tell by looking at the woman's possessions, it seems like she's a poor student herself. Hard to imagine she would have anything worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep, se deep-seated resentment toward the victim? I'm afraid I couldn't say. 
Apart from visiting secondhand bookshops, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, doesn't appear to get out much. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. If theft and grievance had been ruled out as the motive, what reason could Mr. Natsume possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Yet, you arrested the man in spite of that, in a totally unjustified and heavy-handed way. Well, this guy has like the most animations out of like all the prosecutors. <laughs> he has an animation for this, he puts his foot up on the table, he drinks wine. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncorked bottle into the public. Yeah, couldn't he get in trouble for that? What if it hurt somebody? <laughs> but your words have soured its hollowed bouquet. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed here. What? Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Inspector Gregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the const constabulary came to arrest the Nipponi's student. Yes, sir. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else about but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he just bought. He was on his way home from a bookshop, it seems. It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found the bloke to arrest him. Old books, you say? Yes, my lord, I have a photograph here of the scene of the crime, taken immediately after the incident. Ah, uh, yes, I can clearly see the books to which you are referring. I will take that photographic print as evidence, please. Your, you Nipponese are a spineless breed, too cowardly to admit defeat. Denying everything despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Well, I... Forgive me, Lord Van Zyks, but the defendant is not denying everything, as you put it. What are you doing, Miss Susato? Do go on. Mr. Natsume has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right? Well, now that you mention it, when we visited him in prison yesterday, he did tell us what had happened. As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat she was, and just when I went to overtake her... She suddenly let out a scream and collapsed onto the cold hard slabs of stone. I was terrified I had to get out of there, so I ran. Hmm, a green overcoat? Well, that's exactly what the woman in the print is wearing. Oh my, a photographic print in full color. What would the world come up with next? The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. That does not mean he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time, just the two of them, the victim and the accused. In other words, there is nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. A fact that the accused concedes. Hmm, it seems this cross-examination could prove to be pivotal, counsel. Proceed, please. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use this cross-examination to turn the tables here. It's our only chance. Okay, as I said, it was 5 o'clock. We just press everything. A light fog, you say? Well, light for London. You could see the opposite side of the street for once. Not much further, though. That's light, is it? 
Around these parts, yes. Not something I'd expect a Japanese fellow like yourself to know, of course. I've read that London is famous for its fog, but in my country, people usually imagine that that gives the city a rather beautiful appearance. How quaint. Yes, well, it's not something us Londoners tend to romanticize as I expect you can appreciate. I see. At this time of year, the fog causes a large number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Sometimes you can't even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Indeed, the other day I was very nearly trampled by the horses before I could see the carriage they were pulling. Ooh. <laughs> you should definitely remember to stop, look, and listen. However, on the day that concerns us, the fog was somewhat lighter than usual. A fact no doubt lamented by the accused. How are you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend, because that is what the witnesses to this crime have told us. Oh yeah, the ins Inspector Gregson mentioned the witnesses yesterday, didn't he? That's right, one of them is a policeman, I believe, from Scotland Yard. That is correct, ma'am. Then we must hear their testimony. The prosecution will of course call them to the stand, should it be necessary. Oh, well, wait a minute. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already. No matter how light the fog might have been, no one could have seen... I'm unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads are illuminated by the night, uh, in the night by gas streetlights. Oh. The prosecution believes there would have been ample light by which to witness the crime. Quite. Here in London, for the first time in history, mankind has completely conquered the darkness. Which means we really need to hear those witness statements. If I could just get through the fog of this cross-examination, maybe we'll be able to. It seems the counsel for the defense is taking stock. Continue with your testimony, Inspector. From behind, you say? That's right, as you can see from this print. Yes, quite so, Inspector. The handle of the weapon is clearly protruding from the victim's back. And you say this poor woman, Miss Green, remains in critical condition? Comatose, no less. I'm afraid so. She's been treated at Bart's. I was hopeful that she'd come around before the trial started so I could take a statement, but it wasn't to be. Yes, that is indeed a pity. It would have been most illuminating to hear the victim's own account of events. Luck is on your client's side, it seems. On the contrary, my client has been exceedingly unlucky. Your force of tone is seriously un undermined by those disturbingly wide eyes, I'm afraid. Mr. Natsume's belongings, um, I think you'll find it's all there in the photographic print of the crime scene. Yes, the three books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Secondhand books they were. Irreparably damaged after falling in the snow, of course. The accused could easily have carried all three books in one hand. Which means... His other hand would have been free to wield a knife, for example. He's very clever, isn't he? What do you mean? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Natsume had his hands full with his books. He's managed to close the one avenue of escape we might have we might have had before we even knew it was there. You mean to say the defendant was holding his belongings as he thrust the knife into the woman's back? That must be what happened, my lord, yes. The defendant apparently visits a second-hand bookshop on a daily basis. Yes, so I understand. A shop full of old English literature. I commend the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly attention. 
The bloke's room was stacked floor to ceiling with those musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Well, if I must, I'll have to ask you to look at the street map again, I'm afraid. The closest secondhand bookshop to the accused lodgings is this place here, Bourbon Books. A little place on the corner of Briar Road and Meershaum mm, mm, Street. As it happens, the accused is currently living in lodgings on the other side of Briar Road at the opposite end, which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route he would have taken home. Something like this. Wait, how come? <laughs> this is just this is just me logic. Like, <laughs> but like, how come he took he walked down the same street instead of crossing the road on top? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure there was something that had to do with like walking routes and stuff. Like, that's how you know, because obviously, like this time he didn't do it. I don't. Yeah, this time he didn't do it, but like. They showed the route, like, oh, obviously he would have gone, like, this way, and, like, just down the street, and then crossed the road to his house. Is it just, like, a me thing? Like, like, when I, when you cross the street, and then your house is on that side, so you don't even have to worry about crossing the street again, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's just me. The defendant would have certainly passed the scene of the crime on his way home from that particular shop. Mr. Narihodo, I think what the, what the inspector just told us could turn out to be of vital importance. Yes, I agree. The most important point that the inspector just made... The location... The crucial detail in what you just told the court, court inspector is the location of the bookshop. I couldn't agree more. So, where is it exactly? Eh? Are you winding me up, Sunshine? I just explained that. I got the map out and everything. Used red, blue, and ink and drew the plug frow home for you. And I distinctly remember seeing you nod along. Oh, yeah, of course. I must have been nervous. I didn't take it in. The blunder of the day goes to you, my learned friend. No, no, not yet. The trial's only just begun, after all. Okay, I mean, I thought it was important, but oops. Oh. Oh. Okay, now I see. <laughs> now I see, yeah. Inspector Greg, to may I ask you a favor? Why would you kindly add the name of the bookshop? It may be of vital importance, maybe. Oh, well, you know, I mean, yes, it could be a very important clue. Well, this is my bad for not reading it. I, I completely forgot I picked that up. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Oh, it's a receipt. <laughs> Oops. Okay, now I got it. Look, see, it just takes a little bit for the brain to be moving. It's too early and it's not even that early in the morning for this. It's too early in the morning when it's... 12 at tw 12 at night no 12 uh, 12 in the afternoon what is it sunshine i'm a busy man you know this is a receipt that we found in mr natsume's room it was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of three secondhand books and you found that in the accused room did you how come we don't have to like turn in this evidence like oh we went through his stuff and we found a receipt like doesn't this have to go through protocol and like okay yeah it's legit i mean <laughs> I, from, I guess from the game point of view it's fine but like the prosecution has to do all this stuff where it's like and then they're like oh we accept this as evidence or whatever we just pull up with a receipt like hey yo you forgot about this receipt that we found yesterday yes but the oh but the point is not where the receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. This receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Your Books? Y-O-R-E, I presume. Yes, my lord. So Mr. Natsume did indeed purchase a number of books at a secondhand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh? What? 
Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Yes, sir. Your books is another secondhand shop not far from Bourbon Books. It's just that, well, it's such a small place I didn't think the accused would have known about it. But in fact, that is the bookshop which the defendant visited on the day in question. And this receipt proves it. Yes, for what difference does for what difference it makes? Wherever the man purchases musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. I disagree. I mean, after all, um, I have the street map here. If that might be of help. Oh, um, yeah, thank you. Have a look at this, please. If the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books. Then yes, he would almost certainly have passed the place where Miss Green was attacked. However, if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books, it may very well turn out that he wouldn't have passed that location at all. Could that be true? My my, it rather depends on where this other bookshop is, but I do declare it may be a possibility. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said. Absolutely. It absolutely could be right. Inspector Gregson, where is this your books establishment? Well, obviously we looked into that. It turns out that your books is just here on the next corner of Meerschaum Street, going east. The local map's information has been updated. And there you have it, as you can clearly see now. It still doesn't matter! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh! My learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown, the way he reg regales us with such witticisms. To your future career in the circus. Now you put that glass down now, or I'll put it down for you. I didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. If the accused was coming from your books instead of bourbon books... There's no doubt that she still would have passed the place where the victim was stabbed. Yes, thank you, Inspector. I mean, we didn't know where it was, so I mean, it's like a, you know... Allow me to reiterate from my learned, if somewhat slow, with Nipponi's friend. Wherever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. As I suspected, you can't fool me, and I don't suggest you try. What did I say? Hey, I've had enough of this Beg your pardon, terribly sorry, but would you mind repeating that? Mr. Naruto, though, we mustn't give up. Well, what do you mean? If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the members of the jury are, uh, may very well decide that Mr. Natsume is guilty. But she's absolutely right. We must think. We must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. They claim Soseki must have passed that location on the, on the incident on his way home, but... The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Explain yourself, counsel. Uh, yeah. You can see what I mean on this map. When returning from your books to his lodgings, Mr. Nasume could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between two places. If the defendant used these streets, look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that... That route is what is commonly referred to as the long way around. Uh, on a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? Well, 
The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words... The accused took the obvious route back to his lodgings and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. A uh, but, a uh, but, uh, yes, I've got it. Obviously, we must ask the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsume which route he took home. I have already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Ugh. That's right. As I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. That day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. I don't. <laughs> I don't believe this. I thank you, my learned friend, and suggest that we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what you what say you insightful jurors? But but even if that is the case, the defense still I agree with Lord Van Zykes wholeheartedly and in every way. What? I don't believe it. Does, does he mean? We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Very well. In that case, I hereby call upon the members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Yuzai! 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 Oh, maybe if I... Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. That was the only thing I can think of. <laughs> this is just wait. What was the other thing to say? Just wait? Oh, unless that was meant to happen. I'm actually not sure. Because usually when, when they all do, like, the guilty stuff, it just means it's <laughs> guilty, so... <laughs> Okay, it's not over yet. Oh, they got me. Okay, I still have one last chance. I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. I have to turn this around somehow. That is actually how the game over happens, where it's like, oh, they all just say guilty, and they're like, mm -hmm. found guilty, but it was meant to happen this time. They got me good. <laughs> I thought I fucked up. It's like, not the game over. Anything but the game over. So I presume you intend to wield your right again? Or our rights again in this trial. Rights of the defense written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago? Call it antiquated if you will. But it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summation examination. Are the members of the jury redder, re redder? <laughs> ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that Nipponi's whippersnapper on his... And his uncus un refusal to throw his in his alley. You will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. Like someone who was who was involved before should not be coming back <laughs> as a juror. For pity's sake, that little Nipponi's oddity already admitted it himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why it can only have been been the victim. The man wouldn't have gone around the house on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. So the poor woman was attacked from behind. Was she how dreadful? I really don't care. Can can we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. Hmm. Your books, yes. Nice shop, that. But bourbon books? Mm, no, not worth a visit. With only minor exceptions, the reasons for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. <laughs> when the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the, uh, the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant had then fled from the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. 
Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt now. Well, why did he have to run away like that? And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? Hey, yo, this is no time to be grumbling. If we want to force the trial to continue... Yes, I know, I have to turn the tide to make the jurors change their minds. Well, four of them at least. Exactly. We have no choice but to forge forward. You have the floor, counsel. Begin your summation examination. I just need to keep this trial going somehow. You can do it. Okay, he admitted it. I guess I could press them. Um, excuse me, but aren't you... Yes, that's right. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. Or the other side of... Or the side of it, anyway. If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the gold rushed down under, I came back to London for work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started fossicking around. Bruce Fairplay was a, ma was a man of repute. Sorry? Don't think I've forgotten how you treated me the other day. You had me and that young hatter pegged as criminals. Oh, well, you know, water under the bridge. Now there's all sorts of rumors buzzing around and the police have been badgering me non-stop. If, if I could turn back the clock. Well, anyway, I don't know about the Hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. I'm free to make up my own mind about who's guilty and who isn't. Thank goodness. Alright, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. Hmm... None of these sound like they go together at all, especially like the last two. You're right, you're right, you're right that at the time of the incident, the defendant admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Well, quite, that's precisely my point. Clearly that someone wearing green was the victim. And clearly that funny little Nipponese man with a disturbing mustache is the culprit. But let us not forget, madam, the defendant vehemently denies attacking the woman. Why, of course he does. If he admits to stabbing her, his life is over. The man is obviously a liver-faced coward, honestly, claiming the woman simply collapsed before his eyes. But if that's a lie, as you're suggesting, do you not think he would have co concocted something more credible? Oh, I really couldn't say. After all, you are foreign. Who's to say what goes through your funny little minds? I could tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. I do declare the man has already made the admission. He himself has stated that there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could possibly have committed this awful crime. If no one else could have done it, then the accused must be the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. Your argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind. That went well. For her. A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line too, and so is my family's. Oh. The likes of you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat, and neither do the wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. I go to the union every morning to find out what needs doing. If you're late and the work's taking, it's taken, it's tough. At this time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left and left, right, and center. They're after cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix it. It's a it's a hard slog from dawn till dusk. It is. So, you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as, uh, of the of the incident as well. That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just round the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop, it was. What? Another coincidence? That's right. Mere Shalm Street, it was. 
near Shaum Street. On the map, there are only three named streets. Juror number five, I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. What's the point in that? Can't we just get this business over with now? Please, sir, it's important. Fine, I'll do it. Okay. I was digging up near Shaum Street. Should I just press them all? <laughs> like, we got extra information from that guy. This guy doesn't seem like he'd change it. Like, he has, like, solid logic, I guess, from what they were saying. It's just, like, more of, like, these three, maybe? Hmm, sorry. Fold it, you say? Fold what? Oh, uh, no, no, what I said was hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing, every day, including the day you're all talking about. And what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon, and it would have been just before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing, every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say, exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh yes, no mistake there, I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry, not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and donked my head. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? Okay, where the heck is Calabash Road? Calabash Road. Okay, so it's like over here. Somehow he knocked himself out like he fell. Okay. That's right, I live in Cornpipe, you see. Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. Juror number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement. It may very well be extremely significant. Hmm, sorry, extremely sick. Oh no, no, I'm quite all right now. Would he actually do it? It sends a shiver down my spine to hear the members of, ju of the jury so convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt. But I can't help feel feeling that some of their opinions are rather subjective. I agree, it's the irrelevance of what some of them are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. <laughs> Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually incriminate Mr. Natsume of anything. That's something. We must use that to our, our advantage. Okay, so we got two. The first two don't give a shit. I feel like this guy also probably, like, you can't really convince him. Maybe, maybe this woman? Whatever is the matter, young man. You're the wife of Mr. Garadev, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume's room? The master's wife? Where do you get your ideas, sir? I'm the maid. The maid, you understand. She's keeping up that charade. This is going to be awkward. Um, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you'd been selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. It was in the letter I received. The instructions were very clear, so I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyway, Mr. Natsume, the defendant, takes lodging in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although he's only been in a little over a week now. And in that time, surely you must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes. He's just the sword. What? Spending all his time in that dark and dingy room, sporting that unscrupulous mustache, the man never speaks, and don't get me started on those shifty eyes, all the neighbors are talking about him. I've heard them, you know, people think he must be building a bomb in there or something. 
Oh dear, poor Mr. Natsume. How could people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm, nothing more. Well, I just called him a worm, so... Anyway, I'd better be careful about inviting this maid to speak. She's said enough damning things already. Okay, so we have... Okay, I guess we... Okay, you know what? <laughs> just talk to this guy. But you can't deny that there are other routes Mr. Natsume could have taken back from your books. Oh, yes, like you drew on the map, you mean? What was it? Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that uh, that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at the moment, there's no proof that shows he did, is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. And as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yes. Why is all this true? So, really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given it a lot of thought, you know. I just I didn't just make up my mind on a whim that he did that he did it. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone the, the Calabash Roadway, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest I would. Hmm. A reason why Sosaki might have taken the longer way home. Yes, a good reason. I don't imagine you'll be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. Oh wait, what did he say? He said that they were working on the road? They were digging up the street. Oh, wait, if they were- hold on. If they were digging up the street... They were digging up this street, right? So they could have been doing road work or something, so that would mean he would have to take the longer way around, you know, right? Meersham Street. He's digging up Meersham Street. Can I press him again? Can I ask him where it was? So if I understand correctly, you're a day laborer and you were doing road maintenance that day. That's right. Like I said, you get a lot of burst gas and water pipes underground in the middle of winter. It's the only time of year fellows like me can actually make a few bob and I'm missing out today. And when you say from dawn till dusk, well, the work has to be completed within the day, you see. No coaches or pedestrians can pass while it's happening. I wonder if I could trouble you, sir, to mark on this street map the exact location of the works you were carrying? Oh, wherever. Give it here, then let me have a look. If it was on that corner... Let's see, then. Here we are, Meershaum Street. is right here. It was a tidy dig. I can tell you, we had to get through all the drifts of snow that had frozen solid. And what sort of time did you... And at what sort of time did you finish the work? Well, we started in the morning and we can't have finished before... Uh, before... Before gone six? I'd say. The snow had stopped coming down, but it was long past dark for sure. That means the road work was still going on when Miss Green was attacked at around five. Road works on Meershaum Street. Okay, that- Okay, there you go. There you go. These two statements are clearly at odds. At odds? Explain. Please don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Eh? What? I just- dude, I just want to get this done and dusted. Well, juror number three? Oh, me, sir? Well, what do you mean? Jura number five's words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the same day, now we now know that there were works being carried out on Meershaum Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant's route home could not have taken him along Meershaum Street and down Briar Road. Oh, yes, of course. Well, what do you think, sir? Well, yes, you can't argue with that, really, can you? We must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. 
every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had turned back and gone the other way. So, the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. I suppose that must be right, huh? Juror number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But, we see now that he had no choice. Yes? My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may... Yes? I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Yes, I'd like to see this trial continue so we get to the bottom of what really happened. What about you, sir? Eh, who, me? Hmm, well, alright then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, it should be filled in, that's what I say. Oh, well done, that was wonderful. Well, we've managed to change a couple of minds at least. It strengthened our position somewhat. Yes, and it will, be, it will prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stances as well. They'll be asking themselves if the current leanings are really right or not. Now, if only, if we could just identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Natsume, we might be able to tip the balance completely. So that's exactly what we've got to do. Van Zeiss is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent by whatever means we have at our disposal. On with the summation examination. Okay, she didn't have anything to add. I slipped over... I guess we can... And what was... Uh, that was around 5 o'clock, you say? The same time as the victim was attacked? I don't know anything about the girl who was stabbed, but my dinner's on the table at the same time every day. And for the record, could you please identify the precise location of your fall? Goodness, it was aeons ago now. I'm not sure if I can remember. It was three days ago. Try dredging your memory, please. Well, let me see. It was especially slippery around, but... Ah, yes, I remember now. It was just on this corner here. What happened to you then? Were you alright? Well, you don't get too many people... Oh, you don't get too many people down Calabash Road, you see. There was no one around when I fell. No one around when I knocked myself out. No one around when I came to again, and no one around when I sneezed. So I picked myself up and went back to my nice warm house where my grandchildren were waiting for me. A sad and lonely picture you paint, sir. You were fortunate not to have frozen to death. Yes, how lucky that he wasn't more seriously injured. True, it sounds like it was very nearly another hospital admission or worse. Oh uh, yes, one more thing. Were you wearing that same green overcoat on the day in question? Absolutely, it's the only coat I have. It took until this morning to dry out properly. It's a good job too, or I ha I'd have nothing. I'd have had nothing to wear here. So count your blessings, I say. Hmm, I suppose we should. This gentleman certainly had a close shave there. Okay, so it, was to it co totally could have been this guy. Because she was like, oh, it was like the same over like green overcoat, right? In the green? But he's not mentioning it, so I don't know. Here, maybe I should save. <laughs> I'll fucking save. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. I think perhaps he did, you know, it's not like I was loud. Okay, there is at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. 
someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are all well aware of this, the poor young woman who was stabbed. Can we really be sure of that, madam? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six's account of what happened to him that day. The same afternoon, there was someone else apart from the victim who was wearing a green overcoat who fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my. My goodness, you mean. That's right, I'm referring to, of course. To hard of hearing juror number six. Are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was the jolly old gentleman at the end of the bench here with me? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man... What has a somewhat fam similar build to the victim. Well, look at that. My goodness me. Hmm? Sorry? You need a pee? And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell on Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly... The crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home. Oh my. You idiot old man, if you hadn't been so daft as to be roaming around there, we'd have boxes, boxed this off hours ago. And really, what were you even thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk the streets these days? Hmm? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat? Is it? My lord, I do hope I won't it won't cause any inconvenience, but you'd like to change your leaning, I presume. I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. And I would too. What? Is it a crime to change your mind? Is it? Well, Well, that summation examination has concluded with a rather, rather large shift in opinion. The eyes, two. The nose, four. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, the nose. I'm like, wait a second, which one are we? <laughs> so the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. Like, I forgot which side I was on. <laughs> which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. <laughs> But it seemed churlish of me to drink from my hallowed chalice moments after raising an objection, only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive these dis the discourtesy. How many of these things does he have? He's like freaking good good dough with the coffee mugs that he throws. Lord Van Zykes. It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet, we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Whatever do you mean? I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed, stalwart juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had which you had excavated, sir. That's right, it took me the whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have a no any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Um, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh, me? 
Well, I can't say you're wrong. No. What? And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the site of your works? Eh, I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. No coaches would have had a hope of passing anyway, and we just turned any gentlefolk back when they came. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman, as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. Oh. Is that true? Is it? The incon incon incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the, at the scene. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Nuss may walk down Briar Road. Crushed in a single sentence. And, old man. Old man, you can talk. You say that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I, um, can't say as I remember. Or, er, can't say I remember. You don't remember? How about a wager, my learned friend? You say it was this old man that the accused saw, but I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. Or dar, Lord Van Zykes, explain yourself. If you had such a trench trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world would you not pr proffer it during the summation examination? I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. But my hospitality has its limits, and they have, they have been reached, I feel. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What are you talking about? My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. Granted, bailiff, bring forth the witnesses. Its next witnesses? Do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's, the prosecution's next witness. Alright, no matter who Van Zykes brings to the stand as his witness and no matter what they say, I believe in Soseki. I know he's innocent and I'll keep believing to the very end until this battle is over. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Constable Roy Royley beat Sa. Nothing to report on the streets, Sa. A Roley, no, not Royley. <laughs> Roley. And I'm Mrs. Beat. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to say I'm this young town. I'm this young town hero's wife. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, no, no. It, it was your husband I was asking about. He seems tired. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from rare days off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day, you know. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check the meters. Oh, check that meters are reading true, and they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting and extinguishing our streetlights. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet, I'd have collapsed long ago. 
but it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London, for the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction, and they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir, isn't it, Roly? A constable, Roly Beat, sir, nothing to report on the streets, sir. What a great witness he's going to be. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw in the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir. I might have to call it here because it's going, it's going too long. It's going too long and I'm about to run out of time, so I'm going to have to cut it here. It's going to be really awkward, but it's it's probably still be like a like an hour at least. This is going on for so long. Yeah.